Bismillah. So here's the, the first hadith. Um, this is uh, reported in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu reminds us that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has, of course, 99 names, and there are opinions of, that he has more than 99. But we have um, we have the 99 names given to us, and he tells us that whoever preserves them will enter paradise. But preserving them is there's more, uh, you know, to it than just memori memorizing them, right? We can all memorize, but it's actually um, about using them, supplicating with them. As Imam Nawawi goes on to ex explain this hadith, he says that it's to preserve them is said to mean to enumerate and count them in one supplication. It's said to, to mean to pers pers persevere in them, to respect them in the best manner, to guard what they require and to affirm their meanings. And it is said the meaning is to act by them and to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the implications of every name. So when we study the 99 names, it's to gain knowledge of our creator, but also to hopefully um, acquire some of, if not all, as much as we can, all of them hopefully, in, in our own conduct, in our own uh, character, um, and to manifest these uh, these uh, virtues um, in, in the way that we live, in the way that we interact with people, in the way that we speak to people, in the way that we conduct ourselves and carry ourselves. So we, of course, have, alhamdulillah, the best uh, example of how to do that. Um, it would be very difficult if you can imagine without having a guide or a teacher to show us the way, but this is um, the gift of the Prophet Sallallahu is that he embodies exactly what this entails, taking on these divine attributes in his own character. And of course, we know that he was described by his wife Aisha radiallahu anha, that he was the, uh, that his character was the Qur'an, right? That he was the walking Qur'an he's often referenced as. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَىٰ خُلِقٍ عَظِيمٍ that indeed you are of a great moral character. So his example is really what we need to study. And, and when we study, we will, of course, see the Qur'an and the uh, by virtue of, of the Qur'an, of course, the attributes of Allah coming through him. And so here is um, uh, Ibn Kathir expanding on the tafsir of this hadith. He says the meaning of this verse is that the Prophet ﷺ would emulate the Qur'an in, in its commands, its prohibitions, and it became his temperament. His character became accustomed to it, and he abandoned his visceral, carnal nature. And that's a really important point, which I'm going to get to at the end of the presentation, uh, what that means, how to abandon your, your visceral, carnal nature. Uh, whatever the Qur'an commanded, he did, and whatever it prohibited, he abstained. Along with this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ingrained with, within him great character, traits of modesty, generosity, courage, forgiveness, forbearance, and every beautiful trait. So again, whenever you see these very specific qualities of the Prophet being, you being know, listed or, or expanded on, we, a good uh, practice is to reflect on your own character. Do I possess these qualities? Where am I lacking? What do I need to work on? Modesty, generosity, courage, all of these virtues and noble qualities. Um, now, how does that, how can we then apply this to the 99 names? Obviously, for time's sake, we can't go through each and every one of them, but I thought for the purpose of uh, this conversation that we could at least focus on these three attributes and how they, uh, and how human, like our virtues or our qualities emanate uh, from these particular attributes. So we have, of course, um, and again, if you don't have the book, please get this book because, mashallah, you can go through each name and, and it expands on the meanings and there's a lot of beautiful commentary on every one. But al-haq, um, you know, the, the the truth, right? This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of, one of his attributes. It l teaches us, just by studying this attribute, other virtues that we can apply in our own daily life and practice, honesty, trustworthiness, integrity, discernment, righteousness, because they're tied together. If you're truthful, you will become righteous. Um, they all emanate from this tr uh, attribute. And not to say they only emanate from this attribute, but these are some of the virtues that we can embody as human beings because they are a reflection of the uh, these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Alim, uh, knowledge, right? The, the most knowledgeable, the all-knowing is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we can understand what that is by in our own um, in, in our own selves by acquiring knowledge, by 
being people who pursue the path of knowledge and wisdom by having increasing our understanding and perception and awareness, just being aware, right? There's a lot of people who are described as 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 being, and I believe Osada Shamira referenced it as well, that they they're kind of going on about life like cattle. They're not aware. And that means that there's there's something else is going on. They're distracted. So waking up, opening your eyes, and of course we know Imam Ali uh, spoke of this too, right? An nasuni am matun tabahu. The people are asleep, and when they die, they wake up. So there's a there is a quality of of the human being that can sometimes put us, induce us into these sleep like states where we don't have awareness. So knowledge is beyond just knowing, you know, knowledge of, from from studying books, but it's actually being really um, awake to, to what's happening. For example, your own, our own temporality. I mean, how often do we, we really think about the fact that our days are measured and we have literally no idea how, none of us, not a single one of us have any idea how long we have on this earth. Now, if that doesn't inform your every single day, that's problematic, right? And a point that I, um, I, I reflect on a lot is travel. Like how many of us take for granted because we live in an era where travel has become so normal and it's very easy to jump on a plane or get in a car and we go from one place to the other, but we don't really think about that, that it's, it's a blessing, you know, as our teachers remind us, it is a blessing and a true miracle that we survive every day. Because the opportunity for so many things to go wrong, given how um, complex our societies are, right? How, how, how many people are occupying spaces and how many things could go wrong, we have to wonder at uh, the fact that we, alhamdulillah, ha are given life every day and that Allah wakes us up and we have another day. So this is just something that we have to be aware of. If you're not aware of this, you take it for granted. And many people end up squandering their time, their life, because they don't bring this into the forefront of their mind that I have to really appreciate every single day. Every single day is a gift. So that's, you know, one way of becoming aware. And then Al-Kareem, this is another attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that really, if we embody it and we understand it, it helps us to do, as uh, the previous slide mentioned, which I'll get to, overcome the bestial qualities of, of the human being. Because to be generous means that you have, uh, first of all, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You trust your creator. You don't have these diseases of the heart that can affect our capacity to be generous, to, to be magnanimous, to be forgiving, to give. Um, so all of that comes from, it's kind of like what they refer to as the scarcity mindset, right? Someone who has a scarcity mindset has, doesn't have a appropriate tawakkal in their creator. But a person who has a, an understanding that Allah is the most generous and that, that when you uh, give, for example, from your wealth, it's never a loss, right? We know this. We know that when we give, it's always an increase. It's actually an investment. And so uh, you know, understanding this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then applying it in your own life, becoming a person who's generous with their wealth, with their time, with their knowledge, who's selfless, who prefers other people, who's uh, magnanimous, who's willing to, again, have compassion for others. All of these manifest from these attributes. So these are the three I wanted to just focus on because practically speaking, they offer us great opportunity to develop beautiful character, right? And so just again to remind us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, in chapter 10 um, here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us. And, and the attributes, once you become familiar with them and you start to read, whether it's the Quran or Hadith, you find that they really are quite prevalent. I mean, they're, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala references them often, again, to, to remind us of, of um, the importance of adopting these, these beautiful qualities. But here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, for that is Allah your Lord, the truth, the truth. So, you know, pursuing truth, what does that mean? Well, it's, for us, it's, it's, again, a defining quality of the believer is that we are people of truth, we seek truth, um, and that even if it's against ourselves, that's a really important part of being people of truth, that we're willing to uh, negate our own nafs, our own positions. And if you put this, bring this in a practical way in your relationships, right? If you're, um, I mean, for those of us who are married, there are going to be times where, you know, you get into these heated discussions and debates and, you know, the nafs wants to... Um, 
c continue double downing and digging your heels and you're just really adamant about your position. But if the truth becomes clear and it's against you, if you're truly a God-fearing person, then you, you, you surrender to the truth because you know that it's more important that you're a truthful person before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than just trying to win the argument or the debate. And this can apply to any situation, but that's you know, one way of being a, a person that really uh, embodies this or understands the importance of truth. And of course, the Prophet we know before even he, um, he received revelation, one of his uh, nicknames or names that he was known for was being uh, truthful, right? As Sadiq al Amin, the most truthful and the trustworthy. So they go hand in hand. And this was uh, something that from a very young age people uh, saw in him. And uh, there were many examples of how those he, he, who were even outside of the faith after you know he received revelation would still entrust the Prophet Sallallahu because he was so trustworthy. And so you know, making sure that we we can really truly say that about ourselves. Are we truthful? Do we uh, lie? Do we um, kind of dismiss or diminish the weight of our words? Do we uh, think it's not a big deal if you're being dishonest? Um, and this, again, in a practical way, can apply to our the way that we um, communicate about ourselves. There's a lot of misrepresentation that happens. I mean, we see it all the time. Uh, you know, whether it's people applying for jobs or um, even just ethics when it comes to studying st students. You know, practice having ethical practices, practices with um, finances. I mean, how much uh, how how much are we really embodying this? There's a lot of cheating that happens, and this is why when you study the diseases of the heart. It becomes clear that um, that these are you know things that we have to really fight uh, uh, the urge to not cheat other people, um, to not be dishonest in our transactions, to not you know d try to fudge numbers or do this or that just because we want something. But unfortunately, this is a very common thing. Even in marriage, uh, people will misrepresent themselves just because they want to get married to someone. They will literally lie. They'll create false stories and and hide very important details um, and it's very it's it's a very uh, difficult time that we're in right now because we have a problem with people practicing being very dishonest so how then you have to think like subhanallah how can you reconcile that as a believer right how, how do you how do you possibly reconcile um, wearing hijab or coming to the masjid praying fasting in Ramadan doing uh, you know going to Hajj and, and all of these other practices that we do while also being um, corrupt on this level, it, but, but it's amazing that there are people, unfortunately, who think that it's not a big deal or they don't really think about it. So being honest is such an important quality for the believer and um, all of us have to, again, ask ourselves, do we really truly practice this um, in, as m in every way that we possibly can? Um, again, the mirror is the Prophet he's the, the reflection of perfection that we're looking at. The next uh, attribute that we talked about was knowledge. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, my Lord is subtle, and what he wills, indeed, it is he who is the knowing, the wise. So, um, again, it's his attributes, but how does that, um, you know, uh, how, how, do, how can we take on that attribute in our own way? Well, being on the path of knowledge. Alhamdulillah, you're all here. This is why supporting uh, organizations like the Rahma Foundation, especially for women, for young girls, is so important because it actually prioritizes this as a path. And we live in a day and age where, um, you know, material wealth is just preoccupies so many people's time energy, thoughts, they wake up thinking about money, they go to sleep thinking about money, and they're always thinking about, you know, just what they don't have uh, versus, uh, or what they want, and, and not really reflecting on what they've already been blessed with. And that's, again, part of our challenge in, in this dunya, is that we're going to wrestle with the desires that overcome um, the, the heart and the nafs, which we'll get to at the end. You know, this constant jihad and nafs, hubba dunya, the Prophet ﷺ said, would be a sign of his ummah toward the end of time. So these are things that we are living, and we have to then say, well, how can I um, how can I, uh, you know, combat or, or, or not protect myself from falling into that knowledge? Knowledge is the way that we protect ourselves because the more you know, the more you realize that as, uh, you know, Sada Shamira uh, referenced as well, it's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you have that knowledge that 
you know, there's nothing to be worried about. There's nothing to fear that whatever I seek and I want, I just turn to my Lord and he can change my circumstance. And I have to really relinquish that to him. Then it puts you in a state of uh, just trust and, and, and balance and equilibrium so that you're not full of this anxiety that of course Iblis calls us to. He calls us to be in states of anxiety and fear. And so to combat that, we need knowledge, but you can't do that on your own either because there's too many, I mean, we live in the age of information. We live in the age of misinformation, disinformation, uh, even in our own, um, you know, in, in spaces where people uh, are, you know, are presenting themselves as being teachers, we have to be very careful because there are a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. And so making sure that the knowledge that we get is sound knowledge and making sure that we're vetting and, and, you know, looking at, you know, the sources of knowledge. And so, you know, yeah. just a rule of thumb, it's really important if you're going to study with someone, make sure that you know who their teachers are, make sure that they cite their sources, because a lot of people are misguided with knowledge that's just given and it may be presented in a way that sounds authoritative, but then you find out that it was actually maybe the, you know, there was no real, um, real reference for that or, or, uh, or you know, it, it was just an opinion, but it wasn't something that, that was sound. So being on a path of knowledge entails all of that. Seeking knowledge, making sure that we're doing it correctly. And here, of course, the Prophet I said, um, uh, reminds us, whoever travels a path in search of knowledge, Allah will make easy for him a path to paradise. So they go hand in hand. I mean, subhanAllah, win-win. You're going to learn. You're going to be calm from this dunya that induces us, again, into states of anxiety and panic. That's what it's designed to do. But knowledge will free you from that. That's why some of the most extraordinary examples that we've seen in, the, in recent months, which I know all of us have, it's literally stopped us in our tracks because we can't even be Believe what we're seeing are these incredible uh, people. May Allah again free them and uh, and liberate them from their from their oppressors. Uh, but the people of Gaza, what is it about them? They they materially they don't have anything. Literally have nothing, but they have knowledge of who their Creator is, and that is why they can withstand what's happening to them. So knowledge is so liberating on so many levels. But we have to be put on that path. So. And that's, again, bringing back the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that calls us to be people of knowledge, al-alim. And then the last uh, attribute that I wanted to focus on is uh, al-kareem, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as the most generous, right? And this is to remind us that we should practice this as believers. And alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, many of us... Um, we come from cultures where this quality of, of uh, being generous, being hospitable, being um, you know gracious, inviting people, whether it's with you know people coming you know into our homes. Alhamdulillah, many of our cultures, this is uh, very common in the Muslim world. People who travel to the Muslim world for the first time are sometimes shocked and struck by how generous the people are, even though they have nothing. They may have very little, but they are so willing to give. And so it's such a beautiful trait. But in our own experience here, especially in the West, when we have an abundance, do we also exhibit this quality? Or are we? do we um, struggle? Because maybe those diseases of the heart have entered, right? Do we? And, and a good exercise, for example, is to think about whenever you want to give, right? Whenever you're in a position to give, if you're having this internal dialogue within yourself and you're, you, you initially had a really good intention and all of a sudden you talked your way out of it, that's a red flag. You want to think about what's going on there. What justification did you give yourself to not send that you know, push that donate button or give that $100 bill, what justification did you give yourself in that moment? Sometimes it might be, I mean, it might be a true concern, right? It might be something real. But if it's a repeated thing where every time you want to give, you're suddenly not able to and you're frozen and you have like this, you know, whole, like I said, internal struggle and then you, you opt not to, that's an indication that there is something going on there and you need to explore that because if you're if you're if your mind is telling you or your nafs is telling you that there's a loss by giving this well we need to go back to the drawing board there and and you have to have a better understanding of how 
generosity works in our in our tradition we don't believe that we believe that the more generous you are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you right when you are showing gratitude for your blessings and you are willing to share right pay it forward share the wealth whatever you've been given Allah will increase you that's just a fact so these are just ways again to uh, to to think about that and then um, the Prophet again this is a hadith that's just a good reminder for us that if we want to taste the sweetness of faith which inshallah we all do we all want we're here we're, we're seeking we're yearning we're asking Allah for guidance we're asking Allah to draw us near well he's giving us direction if we want to do that then uh, these are the uh, these are the steps Right, one who worships Allah alone, so we obviously don't associate any partners, and we declare that very firmly, and we give charity. We actually are people who give, and the way the condition that he describes is so important. How do we give charity? Right, it's not just a matter of giving, but it's the way that you do it um, that we give it with a cheerful and earnest soul that we're willing and happy to give so it's not begrudgingly it's not like oh you know there's this again tug of war no it's that i want to please my creator and i'm going to do this as a practice and it does take time for some, especially if you've ever had uh, you know if you've ever had struggled with with wealth or, or been in those constricted states and you're not sure about your your uh, your you know your risk or, or you you may have lost your job there's going to be moments where you feel uh, anxiety but that's actually the time where the if you're giving the most in that time it's a new, it's a great testimony of your faith so these are all beautiful practices that we can draw just by studying the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our own uh, you know, practical day-to-day -day lives, we we look at you know these these different ways that we can understand the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and and grow um, a greater appreciation for just how truly beautiful our Deen is. I mean, again, I mean, I'm I'm always in in that state of reflection of Alhamdulillah ala ni'mat al Islam, and I, I'm sure we all are, especially as we look at the world and the state of the world around us, and we just see things falling apart, or that's what it seems like. Politically, we've seen this just last night. I'm sure some of us were tuned in, going, "Oh my God, what is happening?" And then you're like, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We're Muslim and we know that this you know we don't have to worry because Allah at the end of the day he's in control and we just we uh, we, we we just su surrender and we submit but all of these are, are beautiful again qualities to, to possess now I, I said that you know I referenced that initial page and I'm sure some of you may recognize the slide but it's a very important slide it's something that I think we need to keep reminding ourselves and our children if for those of us who have children that we have to understand how like this this how of how do we reach these ideals because these are all ideals they're very beautiful that we talked about the attributes of Allah we talked about prophetic quality so it's like how am I going to do this right how can I struggle against my soul well we have to know who we are by design and what we've been given in order to do this successfully we've been given the intellect and the in intellect is king as they say it's or queen it's it's at the crown of your 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 body the mind and that's because it's supposed to be leading and so um, if you can again pursue knowledge and you really understand things then it becomes easier to do the rest which is taking control of those other parts of our nature that will make um that that will stand in our way right we do have that we have an appetite of uh impulse we have emotions that impact our behavior and that impact our our spiritual uh progress but if you can develop and and um you know really um pursue uh, knowledge but develop your intellect it will help to to take control of these other faculties right so your uh, your emotions start to take um you know uh, to, to to become more regulated you're not always anxious you're not always afraid because why again you have knowledge of your creator you know the the way that he's designed the world you know that the world is temporal you know so that's a really important thing point to think about whatever you're suffering through whatever you're going through the constant reminder that it's not going to last forever is really important and but that can't happen if you're not aware of that or if you're not using your mind so knowledge helps to temper the emotions that we feel and we experience states of again injustice I know a lot of people um, especially as of late because of everything that's happening they're 
really overcome by emotion. When will this suffering end? How long can we do this? And there's this constant nagging feeling of just rage almost, right? Because you're seeing injustice on scales that we just can't comprehend. But again, it's only knowledge that is going to help us to come down from those intense states where we feel like we have no control because we it's knowledge that informs us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control, that there is a day of judgment, that every oppressor, every aggressor, every evil monster will get their day with their Lord and there's no escape from that. That is the only way that we can survive this dunya and watching all of these atrocities. It, there's nothing else. There's nothing else anybody can say or do to help the person who's struggling to cope with all of this, but to remind us Allah is in control and no knowledge escapes an alim, right? Nothing escapes him. So be patient and wait. So knowledge does that and then knowledge also helps with the appetites because we're, again, look around the world and you'll see people completely becoming enslaved by their appetites, whether it's food, drink, their, you know, their carnal desires, they've come, they've lost it. And that's now all they do and all they think about. And they've lost control. There's no control over themselves. And our deen again directs us to balance, to restore uh, an equilibrium in the body and that there's an appropriate time and place. And so we have knowledge that informs us. Don't be overeat. Don't overconsume. Take care of your health. The body isn't a man. Allah will ask you about it. Uh, you know, protect your, your, your physical body, but protect your family, protect your community. Do not indulge. Do not indulge in harmful things. These things will destroy you. They'll destroy, they'll have a ripple effect. They'll just go right through families and, and societies. And that's exactly what's happened. Consumption of alcohol, drugs. Look at what it's doing to our world. But our deen, again, knowledge. Don't fall into that. Don't go near it. So these are the things that if we really understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all the tools we will be able to, to, inshallah, protect ourselves and acquire beautiful character. And um, again, just in case you know you haven't heard this before, these are the three stages, and it's a process. So we first have to understand the way that we're created, which is the slide before. But here's the process, right? We have to go through the takhali. So. If we want beautiful character, yes, knowing the attributes of Allah, studying the seer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, absolutely important, but we also have to empty out. We have to purge. We have to be willing to look at our own diseases of the heart and say, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to lie. I don't want to gossip. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to be envious. I want to stop. So for anybody, for example, if you struggle with envy, and this is a, an issue that I know is common because I hear about it all the time, um, especially in this you know, post social media, you know, age that we're living in where we're bombarded with, with uh, a lot of showboating and people just constantly shoving their lifestyles in our faces, it can be very difficult, right, to, to not feel envious. Well, one of the ways that you can overcome that instead of trying to, um, you know, Play, in, a, in a way, making it hard for your, harder for yourselves is to just get off. If, if, if social media is driving you crazy and you keep looking at, you know, people's lives and their marriages and their homes and their clothes and their love, you know, their vacations, if it's too much for you, get off. And I know people who've done that, and that's just amazing. You know, people who just are like, you know what, I've deleted my Instagram, I'm not, it just was too much for me. That is a person who's using their intellect. They're realizing that me, you know, like, complaining and whining about these problems, but then continuing to allow for the very means for these problems to occur just doesn't make sense. So I need to cut myself off of the root cause, and the root cause is exposure, right, consumption. So just to get off. What's it, you, do you think that you're going to suddenly become irrelevant and fall apart and have no clue what's going on in the world if you're not on Instagram? <laughs> You'll be fine. Because inshallah, the fact that you're not on social media, hopefully something will stir inside of you to say, you know what, I need to actually have more, you know, real transactions, more real conversations, not just behind a screen and that'll that that healthy replacement will start to really give you a bigger broader picture of the reality of the world because you're not looking at the highlight reel anymore of a person's life and i'm sure we've seen i mean i know some of you may follow some of the more popular 
you know, Muslim influencers, but we've seen marriages fall apart. We've seen a lot of horrendous things as of late. You know, people, their struggles are in public view. If that's not a, enough of a wake, wake up call for all of us to not look at uh, this distorted lens of what's happening online and then think that that's reality, I don't know what is. But my point is, if that's a disease of the heart that you struggle with, get off. Khalas. <laughs> don't engage. Right? And then increase your, inshallah, sahba with people who remind you of Allah. That'll help you. So tahalli is is really about action, and you're the uh, you're the you're the one responsible. It's all on all of us to to do that and to identify those diseases. And then tahalli is to try to now acquire. So this is what this presentation was, and of course, studying the sirah, continuing to study the attributes of Allah. It's we're now uh, adorning our souls, right? We're acquiring that knowledge. We're taking on those virtues. We're learning about what it means to be really generous. We're learning about what it means to be patient, truly patient, right? Sabrun um, jamil, and then all of that will come as you learn, as you study. Um, and then taking on, you know, these virtues as as practice, because, you know, gratitude, for example, is is not something that's just on the tongue. Gratitude has three parts to it. You have to believe truly in your heart when you're grateful, like you truly feel grateful to Allah. It overwhelms you. It's like, you know, it's 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 uh, brimming. You're brimming with gratitude. Then. It, it comes on the tongue where you say, Alhamdulillah, thank you, Allah, for all the blessings. And you're constantly in a state of, you know, practice of expressing your gratitude. But the true manifestation of gratitude is action, right? It's, it's, it has to go beyond the tongue. It has to go beyond what's just in the heart. You actually have to act. And that's where sharing your blessings comes into play. So tahali is really taking on those virtues. And then tajali, the final um, process, is trying to look at the highest potential you can have, and that becomes your target, right? A sabiqun, a sabiqun. The, 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 the believers are constantly vying. We're trying to get ahead. We're not settled with mediocrity. We don't want to be last. We want to be first. So that competitive edge is really important to adopt, to be like, I just want to keep getting better and better and better. And no matter how good you get, knowing that you can always be better, right? So that's what uh, acquiring beautiful character entails, inshallah. And I think that is my final slide because uh, Stada Fad was here, my nafs crusher, and she's going to slam this. No, <laughs> just close my laptop. Alhamdulillah. But jazakumullah khairan, inshallah.